I do the transplant, he kills his brother. You need to find another donor. They're African American. It makes it nearly impossible to find a full match. Ooh, that isn't quite accurate from Wilson, but it's definitely based on the truth. You see, there are fewer people who share DNA with black people than with white people. That means a black person only has a one in four chance of finding a match on the registry, while a white person has a three in four chance. Very excited to be reacting to House MD season three, episode 21, A Family. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos, and this will be episode episode 79. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. And you understand how proud we are of you, right? You said you want to see your brother before the procedure. Let your brother rest up while we take some of your marrow. Because your healthy bone marrow is what's going to cure your brother's leukemia. <coughs> and that is the exact same reaction that people gave to a supermarket nose cannon launch in 2020. What I've gathered so far is Master Aerosol over here is giving a bone marrow transplant to his brother that probably has a type of leukemia. Getting bone marrow matches without a first degree family match is incredibly rare, quite literally one in a million for an adequate HLA match. So if Senor Sneezy is now unwell, then he can't be a donor anymore as he risks inoculating his brother who has no immune defense. That means the team need to either find a rare match on the register or figure out what caused Junior Juggersnot to earn his name and I bet it won't be the common cold. I'm intrigued, let's learn more. <laughs> Maybe it's just an allergy. Not with an enlarged spleen and a fever. I do the transplant, he kills his brother. You need to find another donor. They're African American makes it nearly impossible to find a full match. Ooh, that isn't quite accurate from Wilson, but it's definitely based on the truth. You see, there are fewer people who share DNA with black people than with white people. That means a black person only has a one in four chance of finding a match on the registry, while a white person has a three in four chance. For Asians, it's around 50-50. It isn't just about numbers though, it's about volunteers. You see, only a small percentage of the black community sign up to be donors. If you look at the US register, only 4% identify as African American, even though they make up 14% of the population. That is a problem that 10 year old MJ Dixon felt personally when he got leukemia as an african-american that had no matching donors on the register he began campaigning during african-american bone marrow awareness month to encourage more signups but couldn't find a match he luckily managed to overcome his cancer without the transplant but it took three years and others may not be so lucky. The process to sign up as a bone marrow donor is pretty simple with just a swab on the cheek and giving the marrow can be a non-surgical procedure which can be similar to a long blood test. If you want to help out then signing up to be the match could help you save a life as you may just be someone's one in a million. Question for you smart people, what can happen if you give someone a bone marrow transplant that isn't a full match? Answers down below. We make the donor kids sicker. Once we know what the infection is, we'll know exactly how to treat it. As long as he isn't dead yet, we're cool. Go to the kid's house, check for sources of infection. Whatever the kid's got, he didn't get here. Maddie, we found an old water pump in your backyard. You ever drink from it? Yeah, it was gross. Last summer, my shoulder's bugging me. Does that matter? Something else bugging you? He has a cute scrotum. Interesting, the team knew the patient was hiding something and used their instincts to figure it out. Quite on the ball. So what is an acute scrotum? It's a new relatively rapid onset of swelling, pain and tenderness inside the scrotum. There are loads of things that can cause it, but one of the most serious not to miss in real life is called testicular torsion. That's when the testicle twists, obstructing its blood supply. If it isn't detected quickly, then within six to eight hours, half of the family jewels are getting a one-way trip to the Natural History Museum. But for the sake of this episode, it could be a clue. The episode is called Family, so what if the disease that's affecting the brother is all also affecting Matty. Yeah, that's the donor brother's name. You see, sudden testicular pain can rarely be a sign of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is the most common type of leukemia in children. That could also wreck his immune system and make him susceptible to viruses, causing the sneeze. But why would both brothers get leukemia at the same time? There are a few things like exposure to radiation, benzene or Down syndrome that can cause it, but a really interesting one for this episode could be Fanconi's anemia. It's a genetic 
genetic condition that leads to bone marrow not creating healthy blood cells or platelets, which puts you at a higher risk for cancers. It's treated with a stem cell transplant, but also bone marrow stimulators like something called GCSF and testosterone. That would be extremely spicy and be my first diagnostic guess. Best thing about big honking gonads, there's only a few infections that could cause it. What if it's not an infection? CKMB is elevated. Mitral valve, there's a growth. He'll need a month of antibiotics to clear that. His brother only has four days to live. After the surgery, harvest the marrow, marinate it in the targeted antibiotic, simmer and serve. The growth was fibrous tissue. It wasn't infectious. Fibrous tissue and large spleen fever could mean autoimmune. Lupus and Bichette's are our best bet. Or it could be infection. Foreman is this close to being given a mandatory unlimited annual leave with no pay. We know that in the previous episode, he made a huge mistake irradiating the patient's whole body. Now he's cautious, second guessing whether the team is making the right decision or not. It's messed up his diagnostic compass and ability to make decisions to the point where he's being counterproductive. That's why House has given him four days to reboot or he gets the boot. This can happen in real life as well. A previous colleague of mine had seen a 21 year old patient with a cough that had lasted a couple of weeks. He had some fevers at night as well as some crackles on the chest. So the patient was given some antibiotics and sent home. Two weeks later, he came back and he had night sweats, weight loss and fever because of a cancer called lymphoma. Now, every time my colleague sees a cough, he wants to send them for an X-ray and blood test, even if it's only been there for two weeks. Missing a diagnosis is sadly an inevitable part of medicine. When patients have a rarer condition, in reality, it takes quite a few visits to the doctor to figure it out, unless they have characteristic symptoms. This is why a good doctor tries to find the subtle things that differentiate the sicker patients from all the common ones that they see presenting with similar symptoms, like the cough lasting over four weeks instead of two, or plotting a patient's weight to see if their losses are significant. Either way, it seems like the team feel they've ruled out infection and set their sights on autoimmune because of this fibrous thing on the heart valve. We could call that condition non-infectious endocarditis, and there are only a few things that can cause it. Lupus is definitely one and gets a diagnostic guess here, which will be my second. Another is conditions that increase clotting and even some cancers as well. The team are now gonna run some tests to see if it's autoimmune. Could this be the episode when it's finally lupus? Let's find out. Find out what autoimmune it is. Is this bad? He has arthritis. No, it's your damn dog. Choose everything. He's had a good long life. It's his time. Maddie's negative for everything. It's not autoimmune. So we're back to infection. We found a donor. Four out of six still gives him a good chance. Foreman screwed us. Did what he thought was right. You, on the other hand, sucked out. What's wrong? <sighs> really, it's... This is getting incredibly spicy. You see, Matty, the previous donor, was negative for his autoimmune screen, and Foreman pushed the family to go with a partial bone marrow transplant on his brother. The bleeding of the ear signals that Matty's bone marrow is getting suppressed too, which means he could be developing the same disease as his brother. My first theory about them both getting cancer is getting way more likely, but with the partial four out of six bone marrow transplant that Foreman gave, will the brother survive for them to find out the problem? The reason why full matches are important with marrow is because marrow is filled with aggressive immune cell producing stem cells. If the cells produced start detecting the host that they're transplanted into as foreign, then they will start attacking them. That causes a disease called graft versus host disease. It can cause mild disease or it can be severe where your skin gets blistered, it starts breaking down, your liver's failing and you get diarrhea so bad, it feels like your bowels have been watching too much Finding Nemo and want to exit the tank. Now, if you wanna stay in the house tank, then it's check out my channel membership. You get early access to new videos, priority replies to comments, and to suggest a series and episode for me to react to. The first 30 members have a chance to win a one hour, one-on-one -on -one tutor session with me on a topic of your choice. We currently have 29 members with just one spot left. So press join now to secure your spot. I'll keep working tirelessly to make it worth your while. 
flames. It makes it look like I'm going fast. Because he's got grade four graft versus host. If we don't get this under control, his blood will literally turn into water. If we take the roots from Maddie, put them in Nick, turn the kid into a Petri dish. You're saying we should kill one son to save the other? Nick is gonna die either way. You leave here with one dead son or two. No! 14 years on the planet. Most of them spent <laughs> suffering. But your life doesn't have to be meaningless. You can save your brother. Do it for Maddie. We figured out what's wrong with Maddie. Histoplasmosis. They found it without needing to infect Nick, the patient who had leukemia from the start. The disease was attacking Matty, the donor's marrow, and can cause fever, cough, fatigue, and headaches. The team figured it out because they realized the water pump at the back was to help get the water for chickens, and the disease can be transmitted in bird droppings. Some antibiotics will make donor Matty better, but it seems like no matter what the team do, Nick won't be able to make it. Insanely tough diagnosis to get, but amazing to see the sacrifice that Nick would have made to try and save his brother. Giving your life like this for a greater cause is something people have done frequently in history. A particularly notable one was of a Buddhist monk in 1963 called Thich Quang Duc, who set himself on fire to protest the persecution of the Buddhists. He was in the middle of a busy road and the iconic photos of the act show him sitting peacefully as he goes up in flames. Even though this happened in Vietnam, the photos reached corners of the world with even John Kennedy seeing it and saying no news picture in history has generated so much emotion around the world as that one. The things human can do for a higher cause is mind boggling, but question for you smart people, what act of altruism do you remember most let us know in the comments. Your brother was willing to risk his life to save you. Are you willing to do that for him? I can't sedate you. Yeah! I need a lot more. Yeah! How much heat are you taking from the parents? They're calming down. I think it has something to do with both their kids being alive, awake, and eating. Is that my stethoscope? You'll save more people than I will, but I'll settle for killing less. Consider this my two weeks notice. What? Foreman did a surgical bone marrow transplant with no anesthesia and then saved both the patients. I think he redeemed himself there, but seems House no longer has the option of firing him anyway. Of course, we would never do a procedure like that in real life, as even if a patient is sick, then sedation is definitely still possible and we do it all the time. It does make for some very interesting TV though. From an artistic standpoint, it's interesting that they included the dog in this episode, as House did see some similarities between himself and the dog and the dog even had a limp at the end. He doesn't follow the rules, enjoys messing up Wilson's stuff, and most of all, likes Vicodin. Seems like Wilson's taking him back now though, as it's his ex-wife's dog who now is allowed to have them in their apartment. Pretty interesting episode, an insanely tough diagnosis, but I like the puzzle. Say seven out of 10 entertainment, five out of 10 accuracy and seven out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense though until you watch the previous one where Foreman sees his mom again after eight years here.